If you've been using Unity for a while, you probably use debug logs all the time. But today I want to show you an alternative way to figure out what's going wrong when there's a problem with your game. Here I've got a scenario set up where my items are no longer movable from slot to slot. I can't drag these hats around and I don't know what's going on. Well, I kind of do, but I'm going to show you how to figure out what's going on or why it's not working if you don't know what's going on. So one of the common things you do is just add in some debug logs like I'd mentioned. But what I like to do and what I find to be much more effective and usually a lot faster is to go into my code editor and attach the debugger. To do that, there you can hit this little button here or I just like to hit F5 on my keyboard. That's the hotkey that will attach the debugger. Now the debugger is going to slow things down just a little bit so that it can provide us extra information about what's going on and allow us to control things. I've got a couple things going on here in this UI inventory slot. There's some methods here for dropping things, a bunch of other code, but I want to find the spot where we drop something on a button and see if maybe that's why it's not working. This is one of the first things I would do if I'm trying to debug this go. Well, let's, what's the first step? I drop it onto a button. Is that being detected? Let's go check it out. So I'm in this drop on button method and what I'll do is click over here on these line numbers and I'm using JetBrains Writer. This works fine in Visual Studio Code or whatever code editor you want. I'm going to click over here and you get a little red circle. That's a breakpoint. What's going to happen is when the code executes and it gets to this point, line 86 of this file, this drop on button method, if it gets to it, we'll see in a moment, then it's going to stop execution and allow me to take control and view a lot of other information. Let's go try it out. So if I can find my window here, and I drag my hat over here to my feet. Obviously shouldn't go to my feet, but look at that. We got our breakpoint. So now I'm stopped at the drop on button. And if I put my mouse over hits, I can see that it's actually, I can expand it out. It's a collection with zero things in it because, well, we fill it on the next line. And I've got a couple options here. I can continue on execution of my program completely to the end by just hitting F5. I can also hit F10 to step ahead. Let's try that. Here you go, I'm now on line 88. It skipped over 87 because that's empty and Rider has a lot of little pop-ups that it gives you, but any editor that you have will allow you to click or hover over any of these items and then get a little pop-up here to see more information about it. Also, if you have a debug window, you'll usually see things like all of the local objects. That's what this section is showing me. And Rider, I've got an opportunity to go in and just type and run code. And here I can see the call stack where, I, where I've come from. So this actually came from on end drag and I'm in the drop button here on line 88. I can continue on just by hitting F10 and it's gonna iterate through each one of these. It's gonna to try to find the dropped button. Ah, no drop button. Well, let's hit F10 again and continue on because what did we have five things? If I continue on, F10, F10, oh, there we go. The third one was a button. So I found a button and it looks like I've logged something out and then I call the swap method. Now, if I hit F10 here, it's just going to step over that method and run it. Let's try it. So I hit F10 and well, I don't know what happened now. It didn't work before, so I can't assume that that worked. Returning true is probably not gonna help. So what if I wanna go back and run that one again? What I can do is just take this little yellow arrow drag it, click and drag it, and move it right back up there. Now I can hit F11 and step into the method. That's gonna actually go in the method and execute the code inside there and allow us to continue stepping through. So I'm on line 104 now of the inventory slot. I'm gonna hit F10 to go down to 105. And then I wanna go into uh, inventory swap. Let's hit F11 and see what that does. So I hit F11 and say, oh, okay, that calls a server NPC and it's gonna swap two items. And now I can actually already see what the issue is. Luckily, Rider like I said, does this nice little thing where it pops up and gives you little tooltips. A lot of the other editors will do that too, and there's plugins and stuff that'll make that show up. But I can also look over here and notice, look at that, I'm trying to slot, swap slot zero with slot zero. So now I'm still debugging and editing. Let's just go up the call stack and see maybe where that came from. So if I look, go to my call stack window here and just go up up to swap, you'll see that I passed in slot one's index and slot two's index. Now I go, okay, well, where are slot one and slot two's index coming from? Let's hit shift F12. And that'll show us all of the references to it. So if I look down here, you see that show item definition uses it and drop item server RPC uses it and the swap uses it. 
let's see where it's defined by hitting F12. Go up here and see that, oh, it's not actually ever set, right? That's what it's showing me right here. It's set to zero, and down here it's not being set. And the reason for that is because in my bind method, I had commented it out. I just commented out the setting of this value. And this isn't something that I commented out just for fun. It's something that I commented out because I had accidentally deleted it once deleted this line doing a, a little refactor and didn't realize what happened and had to go through this exact process, stepping through, seeing what happened and being able to attach, debug, bounce back and forth through things. It really helps speed this process up. So you don't have to stop playing, go write an extra log to go see some more stuff. You can actually go back in, change the data to whatever you want and then rerun the code again and again just by hitting F11, F10, and again, F5 will execute all the way through. And there's a lot more to the uh, debugging process. There's a lot more stuff that you can do. But these are kind of the, the core things that you use most of the time. One other thing that is very interesting to do, I think is worth checking out. Let's go just take one more quick look and find that swap method. If you add a breakpoint, and let's remove that breakpoint just by clicking and removing it, one thing you can do is right click on it and add a condition. So one thing I could have is like slot one index is equal to slot two index. And then it would only stop if I called swap and these happened to match. That way if I had a scenario where things are usually working but once one time they're not, I could use that to break. Now I don't think that's a great example. Typically an example of something that I would use that for would be like I'm loading all of the items but one item is bad and every time that item is bad. I add a break point right at the beginning of my load method loading the items and say, hey, if the item ID is this item that I know is breaking, then stop and let me check it out. That way I can have the whole list of items run through and stop at exactly the point where things are going bad. And I mean, that's what this is for. It's for debugging. You can see the, the little bug there, knocking out bugs in your games. So if this was helpful, if you do a lot of debugging, please uh, don't forget to leave a comment and thumbs up. And if you have debugging tips, please drop those down or questions about how this all works or other things you can do. I'm definitely open to those as well. And if you're interested in seeing this in a multiplayer scenario, don't forget to check out the multiplayer mastery course. There's a link in the description below or go to game.courses. You'll learn how to build this whole thing out in a, in a working scenario and debug it in your own projects as well. And also we've got daily, not daily, every other day, live calls where we go over student questions, problems, people bring their own projects and get answers and help with the stuff that they're struggling with to make it a little bit easier to build your games and get them out there. And be also, it's a great place to share and show off what you're working with. Anyway, if you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. Otherwise, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you are interested in. See you later. Bye.